Events like this cannot happen without our progress partners of the Surrey Board of Trade. They are the law firm of Faskin, the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, represented by SNF Benefits, BDC, the Business Development Bank of Canada, Scotiabank, and Western Community College. I ask you to stay muted and then after the presentation is over, uh, we'll go to questions. You can type your question in the chat function of the technology, or you can raise your hand and ask your question verbally. Uh, certainly, this is uh, an, a unique opportunity uh, in a roundtable format instead of, instead of a formal digital event uh, to ensure that you're asking the questions that you need to ask. Surrey is going to be the largest city in British Columbia very soon. 104 different languages are spoken in our city. We're a border city. We have an international docking facility. We have the greatest number of manufacturers in British Columbia right here in Surrey that are shipping goods, uh, do really ensuring that uh, shipping goods all over the world, uh, but also importing goods all over the world. They're delivering services, receiving services from all over the world as well. Our International Trade Center has 30 different trade connections around the world. And we also deliver a variety of trade documentation services. It's my pleasure to welcome Consular Agent in Commercial Affairs Director Canada with the Consulate of Costa Rica, Procomer, Michelle Carriols. She's gonna tell you a little bit about herself and also introduce Costa Rica. Michelle, over to you. Thank you so much, Anita, for the, for the inter invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. It's always nice. It's always nice to have the opportunity to, to talk about Costa Rica. So just to tell you a little bit about my, myself, um, as you said, I'm the director of the Trade Promotion Office of Costa Rica here in Canada. I've been living here in Canada for the past eight years. It's been uh, a pleasure to develop, um, especially the services and educational sectors um, here in Canada. And I have a background in, in food technology. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to share uh, about Costa Rica, about the opportunities that um, we have uh, to export to, to BC and to Canada, and also some investment opportunities as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my presentation. Just let me know um, when you can see it, okay? Yes, we can see it. Okay, are we ready? We're ready. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me well? I, I, I just want to also apologize. I have a bit of a cold, so unfortunately it's affecting my, my throat, but I, I hope everything's going to be okay. okay. <laughs> just let me know if you cannot hear me well. Okay, so just to go a little bit about the agenda for, for today, and there's a lot of information that I'd like to share with you today, uh, so I'll, I'll do my best. So first, I'm going to explain a little bit about Procomer, about who we are, about the Costa Rican uh, the evolution of the exports of Costa Rica, the balanced trade between Canada and Costa Rica, which are our main strategic sectors. Also tell you about another important institution um, in Costa Rica, which is CINDE, and why Costa Rica is an important investment destination. Okay, so um, is, for us, are, there are three very important institutions that are related um, with foreign trade. One is our Ministry of Foreign Trade, and they are the ones who are in charge of all the, you know, the public foreign trade uh, public policies, uh, the trade facilitation, assignments of, of new agreements. And then we have um, Procomer as the expert promotion agency of Costa Rica. So we mainly, what we do is facilitate connections between Costa Rican companies and international companies. We also promote um, linkages between local companies and the multinationals that are established in Costa Rica. So we administrate the free trade zone regime that I'm gonna talk about that a little bit uh, later during my presentation. We also have the single uh, window for trade. 
Um, and we also um, promote the national brand of Costa Rica, which is Essential Costa Rica. And then we have Cindy. Cindy is the, the Forex Investment Agency of, of Costa Rica. So they're the ones who are attracting new investment into the country, but also taking care of the ones who are really already established in the country and to keep them uh, keep the investment um, going. And of course, I always uh, looking to have uh, the adequate or the proper um, business climate in the country. Okay, so a little bit about, about Procomer. So Procomer is, is actually a public entity. It's, it's not an, an state or governmental agency. So uh, we are run like in a public and private governance, but we have budget um, autonomy. So we're very proud to say that uh, for the past uh, seven years, Costa Rica has been awarded to be the number one trade promotion office in the world by the International Trade Center. Okay, so how we do it, we have different offices around the world. So we have um, around a little bit more than 40 offices around the world. Um, as you can see, we are in, in Americas, but also in Asia and Europe. Um, in my case, I'm the director of the office here in, in Canada, which is based in Toronto, but I look into the whole um, Canadian territory. Okay, so Costa Rica, a little of, um, little facts about Costa Rica. So Costa Rica is in the center of the Americas, as, as you can see. So we are a small country, only 5.2 million people. So that's about the size of Nova Scotia, the population of Nova Scotia in, in size is Costa Rica. So 2.3 million um, um, is our labor force. And we're very uh, proud that our um, literacy rate is 98%. <clears throat> So which are the, the foundations for us as a country? First of all, education, sustainability. So we don't only care about um, doing, like we care about doing business with, with purpose, right? Not only care about the environment, but also care about our people and create social progress. Peace is very important for us. Stability, and of course, trade openness. So as I was saying, we as a country, we're trying uh, to really look forward to promote business with purpose where we care about the people, the prosperity of the people and planet. So going into the Costa Rican um, exports. Um, so as you can see, um, we have been uh, a growing trend in the exports from Costa Rica in the, in the past like, um, like 15 years, and we were, we, were, we were able, sorry, to double our exports in the past 10 years. So in 2021, we export at 20.8 billion, 21.8 billion um, US dollars. And that's a combination of services and, and goods. As you can see, even in 2020 with the pandemic, Costa Rica was able to increase its exports. So when you compare um, Costa Rica as, um, I'm sorry, here. As, as you com uh, compare Costa Rica uh, with um, other OECD members, by, by the way, Costa Rica became an OECD member very, very recently. You can see um, that the total, that the Costa Rica, the total export as a percentage of the GDP for Costa Rica is 32%, and it is even higher than the average for the OECD countries. So exports are, are generating uh, more than 696,000 jobs. We are we diversi we were able to diversify our exports. So we export to more than 159 destinations and we export more than 4,000 products. So um, here, what we want to, to show is how important um, the exports are for the Costa Rican economy as, as, as we like to say, Exports are really the engine of the economy and the exports and the old employment that is um, comes because or related to, to, to exports are what are doing is that um, we were able to grow from low, from coming from a low income to a middle income country. So in 2021, the total GDP per capita was um, 12,400 US dollars. Okay, and also, and this really has to do with the evolution of the exports. So 
and, and that happened, this evolution happened for both goods and services. So as you can see in goods, we started like just regular, just doing maquila, and then we said we uh, move forward to assembly, then actually doing the manufacturing and also now doing the design in engineering and research and development in Costa Rica. Again, with services, maybe it started with very transactional operations, more about, you know, regular like call centers, started with back office. Now it's more about everything with customer engagement, IT support. Now we provide from Costa Rica different uh, corporate services, uh, like from uh, payroll administration, um, digital marketing, software development, and also moving forward to data analytics and content development. So here, when we just to see, I'm just looking to the corners. I know all the words are here are kind of, of tiny, but we, what we really want to show with this slide is how Costa Rica used to be a very agriculture-based country, as you can see in yellow. So we used to export lots of, you know, the coffee, the bananas and plantains. And then we start moving towards more advanced manufacturing. And as you can see in 2020, there's a, it's a very balanced, like we have the medical devices, tropical fruit and other services. Here in this is that it's easier to show. So this is the composition of the exports of Costa Rica in 2021. So as, as you can see here, so then one of the main exports, 22% was related with um, everything with, with um, corporate services. Um, other goods. And then, as you can see, we have 7% of our um, exports are really for um, IT. Then we have medical devices, pineapple, we are the number one exporter of pineapple in the world. We have, and then as you can see how the coffee and other, there's several types of medical devices that are listed over there and actually became the number one as an item, uh, the, as a group of items, I mean, um, the number one export of Costa Rica at this time. So. And then about the destinations of, of Costa Rica. So of course, North America is the main market for Costa Rican exports. 47% of our exports are going to North America. 1% uh, of that a percentage is, is, is going to, to Canada. The second largest um, market for us is Central America and then the European Union. So we have the, and, and the way, and we are able to export and access so many destinations for so many countries is because, uh, as I said at the beginning, our, our ministry, ministry of, of Trade has been um, quite, for, quite active um, signing free trade agreements. Actually, Costa Rica and Canada have a free trade agreement uh, that was signed back into 2002. Actually, it was the first um, agreement that we signed with a developed uh, country. Going very a uh, little bit more specific about the balance trade with Costa Rica and, and Canada, as you can see, Costa Rica imp imports around uh, 400,000 uh, US dollars from Canada, and Costa Rica exported. Um, 119,000 uh, US dollar to Canada. So we're still. So what are the main items that we're exporting to Canada? And it, we, and it's as you can see, it's gonna be very similar of the, let's say like the picture we just show you about the global exports of Costa Rica to the world. In this case, the number one um, export item to Canada are the medical devices. Then we have the cane sugar. Frozen fruits, and for frozen fruits, will be more about um, pineapple, uh, banana, and mango. We also have the green coffee, the fresh pineapple, fruit juices and concentrates, which mainly are going to be, again, a pineapple juices and concentrates and orange. Then we have the papaya and another kind of um, different um, medical devices on electric cables and ornamental plants. So... I'm going to go deeper a little bit about the strategic sectors for ours and, and what a little bit about the different offer that we have in Costa Rica. So, of course, Costa Rica um, is a tropical country, right? So we have the, um, I, I will say, the advantage of being able to grow um, most of the fruit all year long. Um, so the main productions are going to be the pineapple and the banana. 
And then papaya, actually, as a matter of fact, papaya, Canada is the number one market for the Costa Rican papaya um, at, this, at this moment. So we also have mango, melons, and watermelons. And we're trying to promote and starting to export a little bit. We did um, a little bit of exports of rambutan to Canada a few years um, ago before the pandemic hit. And, and the reason we had to stop is because of the logistics, right? Unfortunately, these kind of um, tropical fruits will travel um, by air. And with all the passengers flight that were, you know, canceled, uh, so there, there wasn't a way to bring the product to, to Canada. But um, we are very hopeful that this season, uh, you're going to be able to be enjoying some rambutan and dragon fruit uh, from Costa Rica as well. So what can I tell you about the um, the the produce sector from Costa Rica. So you'll find that um, our growers, um, they are, most of them are uh, Global Gap certified. So they, they you know, they um, have all the, the food safety requirements that they need to enter the, the Canadian market. And they also, for, especially for Canada, being in a small, uh, small market in a way for produce, they are able also to consolidate the, the product. So for example, you'll see that um, Costa Rica can send mixed containers of like uh, cassava and different roots, which are um, very popular here. So vegetables from Costa Rica, cassava, chayori, as I said, other roots, eros, malanga, lila. We also have pumpkin and squash. Uh, this kind of pumpkin and squash, we can um, take the opportunity of the off season for the Canadian um, growing um, season. So, so when you are winters, that's when we can bring this kind of, of products from Costa Rica. So flowers, flowers and foliage is also very important for Costa Rica as well, um, destinations um, and Canada as a destination. So we have the, the resinas, then we have birds of, of paradise and ginger and different type of uh, foliage as well. Um, coming to the food sector, um, I like to highlight that you know Costa Rica is a small country, so in a way um, there are only a few products that we'll be able like to send in by volume. So we have focused more about um, the strategy, more into the niches and, and niche markets like um, so specialty products, gourmet products, all these products that are going to be more for the natural and organic um, trends, healthy food. And also we try to serve the ethnic uh, market, which in Canada is quite important, right? Because it's such a diverse um, eth um, diverse population what we have in Canada. So we are able to look which other um, ethnics will consume not only natural, like Latin American products, but that um, will be able to be appealing to uh, to other to other people in, in here. And also, uh, I said it before, sustainable. Um, more than ever, our companies are, you know, are caring about the providing uh, products that are um, taking care well, the products are not taking care of the environment, but but they are doing their process in companies that are um, taking care of the in, environment. So we have certifications as, um, for example, Rain, Rainforest Alliance in this kind of, of products. Um, again, um, we all enjoy the food safety certifications like, um, like BRC yeah, or all that are um, required by, by the... Um, DC. So we have, um, talking about the products of frozen fruits, fro frozen roots, that will be, again, as I said, the cassava, the um, malanga, and this kind of, of eros from, from Costa Rica, fruit juices and concentrates, sauces. We grow uh, hot peppers in Costa Rica as well. So you'll find a lot of uh, <laughs> variety of hot sauces, hot sauces with, sorry, Hot sauces are uh, with a mix with um, uh, tropical fruits like a passion fruit, mango, papaya, and things like that. We have marmalades, coffee, dry fruits, cereals, beverages, non alcoholic and alcoholics like uh, rum, uh, craft beer, and water. We also have cane sugar, uh, specialty sugars like the demerara, and a wide area of air snacks. I'm just going to um, highlight plantain, cassava chips, 
But again, um, there's a, a very nice variety of, of different snacks. So going, uh, talking about the manufacturing sector. So um, again, different sectors where we have um, manufacturing in Costa Rica. So I'm just going to mention, just to give you an idea of, of the different options that you'll be able to source from Costa Rica. So for metal, uh, we have metal working. So precision machining, stamping, die cutting, finishing process, metal injection, electronics, harnesses, motors, rotors, PC boards, assembly. And, and these examples of uh, manufacturing are serving mainly the automobile and the aerospace um, industry. So for when it comes to health, so we have a very big cluster of medical um, devices manufacturing in Costa Rica. And I'm gonna discuss a little bit later about that. But the good thing is besides the multinationals that are established in Costa Rica, so the whole ecosystem has developed around these OEMs in, in the country. So we also have the pharmaceuticals. We have microbiotics and personal care products for construction and machinery. We have uh, wood, uh, like doors, window frames, metal working, um, prefabricated houses, electric switches, luminaries, and electronics. We also have cables for construction and, and paints. We also do plastic injection in Costa Rica and several uh, types of uh, packaging uh, for like carton or plastic as well. Okay, coming into the services sector that as, as you see, it's, it's a very important um, component of the Costa Rican exports right now. So um, most of the exports are going to be related to software development, um, app development, web development, big data, IoT, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, cloud services, DPO, and staff augmentation. So again, we have a really nice um, group of companies. We have around 450 um, companies that are related with the ITC sector in, in Costa Rica. So it's really a, an important technology hub, to, uh, to be honest, because Costa Rica right now. So especially now that there is a need of IT talent, um, it's always important like to, you know, have Costa Rica in, in mind. Uh, just another uh, place to find uh, another pool of, of talent where, where you can tap into. So going and related with the IT, we also just as um, we see it um, separate is the animation and video game industry. So this is um, a smaller, more niche um, cluster in Costa Rica. We say we have around 35 between animation and video game studios. Uh, most of them um, very um, could be small. We have a couple of, of large animation or video game studios, but most of them are small to medium sized um, studios. So the services that, that we can provide in Costa Rica in digital animation is 2D and 3D animation, rigging services, modeling uh, for game development, all the engineering behind it, but also the artistic, artistic part, sorry, uh, component of the game development, game design, um, storyboarding, motion graphics. So um, a lot of um, services that are provided in Costa Rica. And also we have a lot of um, intellectual properties that are being developed for, this, for the studios as well. So they are not only providing services to other uh, companies, but also trying to allocate their, their IPs in the international, international markets as well. And or platforms when we talk about the video game. Um, for education, um, it's, it's an important sector for us as well. And in this case, what we do is that we connect the Costa, Rica, the Costa Rican universities uh, with international colleges and universities, where in this case, what we try to do is to find these partnerships or collaboration between um, these two entities. So for example, in my case in Canada, we would, I will try to connect Canadian colleges and universities with Costa Rican universities. So what we mainly promote uh, from Costa Rica, even though um, you know Costa Rica has small, we have around 64, 62, 64 um, universities. So that's a lot. 
uh, five of them are public universities. So what we'll do is try with these connections is to bring uh, like exchanges programs to Costa Rica, partnerships for exchanges. We also encourage like the short term programs where students can go to Costa Rica for um, 10, you know, 10 days to eight weeks, depending on, of the program. Summer programs, internships. <coughs> sorry. Internships that are becoming very, very popular, exploration learning. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, for the au audiovisual sector, we're very happy that is, uh, we even though already have like the Costa Rica Field Commission that is uh, within uh, Procomer, and we are promoting um, our own like uh, films and documentaries. And also, hello? Hello. We ask it to everyone, all attendees, to meet yourself while the presentation is taking place. Uh, Michelle, please continue. Oh, yes. Uh, and then we have um, Costa Rica and, uh, as a location, right? As you can imagine, we have, uh, we have forests, we have beaches, um, so we have volcanoes. So uh, there's, it's, it's a very nice um, country like like for for filming as well and we can offer um, a wide variety of um, production services in, in all the stages of production I, I mentioned here post-production like audio vfx but also pre-production services as well are being delivered in, in costa rica okay so going to the last part of of my presentation is about um cinde so an, an investment opportunities in Costa Rica. So cost, CINDE is the Costa Rican Investment Promotion Agency. Um, similar to Procomer, what in this case, what they do is active, actively promoting uh, foreign investment into, into Costa Rica. So it's a private nonprofit um, organization. Very proud as well to say that CINDE as well was ranked as the number one institution in the world for attracting foreign direct investment uh, by the International Trade Center. So they have extensive experience in strategic sectors like the life science sector, manufacturing, corporate services, clean technologies, renewable energy, food industry, and digital technology. <clears throat> so why Costa Rica? Why um, investing in, in Costa Rica? First of all, um, I gotta say Costa Rica has already a proven track record. We have uh, a little bit more than 380 high-tech companies. Uh, 41 of them are Fortune 500 companies. So we are still like having successful growing operations in, in Costa Rica for them. So we have global leaders in Costa Rica and I will let, let this slide do the talking because as you can see really big names over there um costa rica actually we have amazon in the services sector amazon is actually the largest um exporter uh, sorry the larger uh, private employer in in costa rica and you see some canadians names over there like Bombardier that they have back office operations in in, in Costa Rica and of course uh, the main reason of these companies establishing in Costa Rica is because our talent, right? Our people, every time they get interviewed and say, why are you in Costa Rica? So they always go back to, to the Costa Ricans, the, the talent of our people. So you can see here uh, the impact on, uh, on the foreign investment in the employment um, generation in, in Costa Rica. So as you can see, for example, in services, uh, we had back in 2000, only uh, 1000 employees are employed in that area. And now we have um, 100,000 uh, people and 200 night companies. And here is that um, where the life sciences sector is that the other important sector that has um, grown thanks to the foreign direct investment. So again, medical device, this is what we'll more when, when we talk about life sciences, more related to, to medical devices, very strong in everything related with um, the cardiovascular, for example. Um, so companies like, like Boston Scientific, for example, um, Centur Medical are based in, in Costa Rica. So, so 43,000 uh, people are employed in Costa Rica working with this cluster. And we have um, 83 
medical devices company at this time in Costa Rica, then other kind of advanced man manufacturing and the food industry. So as I said, our people make the, the difference. So 30% of the population, um, our population is between 15 to 34 years old. Um, the GDP per capita in Costa Rica in 2020 was uh, 19,000, um, almost $20,000. Very important for us is that um, Costa Rica enjoys a uh, universal um, healthcare and educational system. So both of them are, are actually pillar of our national stability. 80% of um, our GDP goes towards health and 7.3% goes to uh, education. So um, Costa Rica also, uh, and San Jose, which is the capital of Costa Rica, is actually um, ranks third in English proficiency in, in Latin America. So it, it's important to mention here that Costa Rica or the government of Costa Rica has a strategy to make Costa Rica a truly bilingual country, establishing English learning as a national priority. So English is taught in every secondary school in Costa Rica and in 80% of the elementary schools. Another reason to invest in Costa Rica, the strategic location. So Costa Rica is in the center of the America. So that enables like for, for example, in, for global excellence centers to be able to serve uh, 24 seven, 365, um, all year long, right? So it's an ideal time zone to serve the, the Americas. And Costa Rica have capabilities not only in English, but in Spanish, Portuguese, French, even French Canadian <laughs> and German. So another um, advantage about Costa Rica is, is the connection it has to its, with the North American market. So it's only, we have several um, direct flights uh, to US and, and Canada. And also Costa Rica is, a, is an important hub like to connect um, to South America as well in case um, a North American co a company wants to, to have a hub in the, in the Americas to serve Latin America. So Costa Rica also offers an, an ideal location. So we have a, also an excellent business climate. So first of all, Costa Rica, has a strong tradition of peace and democracy. Um, there's, there's a fact that we always like to, and I, I particularly always like to share about Costa Rica, and probably you, you've heard this before, uh, but Costa Rica abolished the army in 1948. And at that time is what they decided that everything was uh, allocated towards um, education. So we also have a long-standing democracy over 120 years. It's one of the oldest in, in Latin America. So Costa Rica is also the most peaceful country in Central America and the Caribbean, according to the Institute of Economics and Peace. So we also are a top innovation achiever in the region. So first in innovation output in Latin America, first in cultural creativity and ICT services exports, and third in global innovation index in Latin America. Um, very important for you to know as an investor in Costa Rica is that Costa Rica provides equal rights and obligations for foreigners and expats. So the political constitution protects private property and foreigners enjoy the same rights as Costa Ricans regarding real estate acquisition and ownership. Um, there is a free capital of movement, no foreign exchange controls, and the general directorate of immigration has a fast track. For example, if you like to invest in the country, like this, this fast track allows like to have faster procedures um, to hire expats. And there are no restrictions of, on the numbers of expats um, allowed to ha be hired in a company. Um, another um, great advantage is about investing in Costa Rica and one that has been very successful is the tax incentives that are offered in Costa Rica. So the corporate income tax in Costa Rica is 30%. If a company decides to invest in Costa Rica and um, 
established in a, in the fit phase loan. There are um, full or partial income tax exceptions of eight or four for years. So you also have your exam for custom duties, value added tax, stamp duty, property charge taxes, and without tax or royalty withholding, sorry, tax on royalty fees. So um, as I was saying, so for example, for the first eight years, a company invests in Costa Rica, 0% 0 income tax, and then the following four year period, 15% income tax. And this, this um, eight years periods uh, can be uh, renewed uh, if a considerable amount of investment, a significant amount of investment is done in that country. And that's why we have, these um, companies that are continuing uh, have continued in Costa Rica um, just just because of this kind of, they, they keep investing in, in that country and generating uh, several um, employment opportunities for Costa Rica. Um, here, um, so you can either establish in a free trade zone park or be out. The only difference with this is will be the amount of investment, initial investment required if you're inside the free trade zone or outside, it's a significant difference. For example, for a services company in a free trade zone park, the investment will be of 150,000 um, US dollars and outside of free trade zone will be 2 million. And this can be done in within the first three years of, of operation. It doesn't have to be everything right away. Um, we are also trying to promote as a country, like to bring more opportunities to the um, rural areas in Costa Rica. So now there is a, an even um, higher, um, not higher in period of years to in incentivate the companies to go and establish operations in, in rural areas in Costa Rica. So in this case, the period changes a little bit from 12 uh, to eight years or and six instead of four. And also the requirements of the initial investment varies. Um, another reason of investing in Costa Rica is that we have a robust utilities, utilities sorry, infrastructure. So as, as, as you can see, we have redundant fiber optic um, submarine cables at both shores of the, of the country. Uh, quality of life, which is very important, right? So we, we are also um, very proud to say that Costa Rica is one of the happiest country in Latin America. We have po enjoyed political stability and absence of violence and tourism in Latin America. It was um, awarded as the number one top, top place to retire. It's also the number one um, destination in Latin America for US uh, students, for, for study abroad students from, from US, and number 10 uh, globally. Um, so it's the number one country where expats enjoy the highest quality of life in Latin America, according to the Expat Insider. So, and just to, to finish with my presentation, um, as you know, uh, and I didn't mention this before, but we, of course, we promote everything about trade back tourism that, that we leave it to our um, Ministry of, of um, Tourism. But I, I think it's important as because I'm saying for us, it's also important to promote business with, you know, with uh, purpose and also to care about the, the planet. So. 20% of the territory in Costa Rica is protected by conservation and natural reserves, such as national parks, wildlife refuges, wetlands, um, and private protection areas. Actually, in 2021, uh, the Republic of Costa Rica won the Earthshot Prize launched by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in the category of Protect and Restore Nature. It's Costa Rica is one of the most, oh, it's on the country with the most biodiversity uh, and also relevant economic policy instruments over countries like even Canada, United Kingdom, New Zealand, United States, and Iceland. Um, the Ministry of Tourism of Costa Rica awards a sustainable tourism certificate evaluating the sustainability of tourism operations in terms of natural, cultural, and social resources management. And, and Costa Rica has a uh, payments 
for Ecosystem Services program and has become something of an icon to the world of conservation. We, um, so yeah, this is um, what I wanted to share with you. I know it was a lot of information. I, I hope you were able like to get speak some of the information that I, I, I wanted to share. And, and, and I think now, Anita, over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Michelle. And everyone, now you have a chance to ask Michelle any questions. If you do, please raise your hand through the raise hand function and I will recognize you. Uh, so uh, we can begin that now. We have 15 minutes left, uh, but Michelle, I'm gonna ask you a first uh, question uh, related to British Columbia and um, BC companies. Uh, that are working uh, with Costa Rica? Are you working with the BC government's Ministry of uh, Economic Recovery, Innovation and Technology to ensure that those international trade linkages and results are in place, especially after the pandemic? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anita, for, for this question. Um, our, the relationship so far with British Columbia or the procurement with British Columbia has been more about uh, uh, private to private, where we connect Costa Rican companies with uh, with cost, uh, companies uh, located in British Columbia. So I would really appreciate any connections with the provincial government that, as you just mentioned, that because I believe it, of course, is very very important, especially as you said um, after the pandemic, to to try to to promote more our regions. Actually. Um, we do a lot of exports um, to BC and different sectors. I, I like to highlight, for example, um, uh, flowers. Uh, it's one of the, from Canada. Um, we have like the flowers are going either to Toronto or mainly to to BC. So that's an important sector for us. Uh, we've been growing in in, in the food industry in a, like what I mentioned about cassava. So for example, frozen cassava. Sorry. <clears throat> It's been shipped um, to BC, mainly private label. So the, the com Canadian companies are having their own label and they're manufa are manufacturing in Costa Rica. Um, and also a sector that is very important for us and is so vibrant right, in British Columbia, it's everything we relate with animation and video game. So, so right now there are, um, I, I cannot give, um, much details because of the confidentiality of this, but um, a lot of um, like 3D and 2D animations are, are being done um, in Costa Rica for, for studios in, located in, in, in BC. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Amen, you have a question, go ahead. Um, hi, firstly, thank you so much, Michelle. It was an amazing presentation, extremely informative. So thank you so much for that. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned um, something about how there could be like, you know, with the education sector, uh, there could be an opportunity with creating those exchange programs or short term summer programs. Um, so I work with Excel Career College. So I was just looking into more into how could we do that? Like, you know, maybe if you could have students here, vice versa i just wanted some more information on that no sounds great and i, I love to have your contact information we we we've been working very closely for example with um colleges uh like like um langara college douglas college uh just just to find these um partnerships uh, and that really depends on your international strategy mm -hmm. and as you know for example now we have i don't know if, if you're a college uh, i'm sorry and i didn't got the name of the college uh, it's called Excel Career College. I've also oh. sent you a LinkedIn Connect right now, so we could uh, connect. Okay. Yes. No, because I, I don't know if you are aware, Aman, about the GSO program, mm -hmm. which is um, this funding that the Canadian um, government launched to promote mobility programs uh, in in international in, in Canadian students, right? So some what we are trying is like for these um, universities or colleges that applied to these funds that to send their students to Costa Rica. So this program is, is, is global skill opportunities. So what the government of Canada is looking for is, as you know, it's hard for Canadian students to travel, right? So there are several reasons and that's another 
another <laughs> webinar <laughs> for, for that, right? But the, the government is trying is to support these and they are trying to support um, like, um, like to target uh, three um, kind of populations of students, like low income or less privileged um, of the um, uh, students with disabilities and indigenous, indigenous populations. So these are the target. Of course, other students can apply for, for those funds. Um, but just I just invite you to review. I know there's going to be a next funding for that that, that could be of interest. So, but anyway, just I just wanted to mention that that fund that is available. But um, with so far, what we've been doing with um, Canadian colleges, for example, with the pandemic, that where students weren't able to travel, so they did virtual internships. So they did virtual internships with Costa Rican non for profit, like for example, they develop fundraising campaigns or, or things like that. So it's a great opportunity, uh, you know, to collaborate in that way, or just faculty led programs where a group of students from your college will go to Costa Rica and they will develop different programs. And, you know, sustainability, as I said, is very important for us. And, and Costa Rica is very well known and recognized for that, right? So I, a lot of the programs are developed in that um, uh, area and, and they're developing English, right? Because we understand most of the students wouldn't speak Spanish. So yeah, I, I think it, it, you know, we can keep the conversation going for bits. There are a lot of opportunities of, of collaboration. For sure, I'll just send you another message on LinkedIn just to talk more about it. Great, great. Thank you so much. So uh, everyone, we have uh, nine minutes left. So I ask you to keep your questions and, and responses uh, tight uh, to ensure that everyone can ask a question. So Beata, over to you first. Hi, Michelle. Um, I have a question. Again, I'll be very brief. Um, we are trying to make a device which is more of a medical device for North America because the particular device will be for respiratory care. We have created um, um, the prototype for it, but we would like to extend it to the point we have a very difficult time to outsource manufacturing facility here in Canada. Uh, would that be something in your interest that uh, it's not a very complicated device, it's more of a portable device? Would it be somehow that we could uh, see a ways of contribution or, or cooperation somehow? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, you know, um, I, I'm gonna put my email on, on the chat here, and then and then you can send me the, you know, the details. And you know, um, there's a cluster of medical devices in Costa Rica where I can put you in contact with them, and they will sign, you know, all the NDAs that you will need for them to to review. So, so, so there's a possibility. Uh, we have contract manufacturers in Costa Rica, right? So it's a matter of understanding if the type of device that you have uh, matches with the capabilities that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Patrick. Thank you, Nita. And uh, thank you very much uh, for, for such a great presentation, Michelle. I really appreciate it. Um, what, what infrastructure do you have in the way of uh, technical colleges or schools in Costa Rica that is producing good talent that could uh, work in the tech industry. Specifically, I've got clients that are always on the lookout for, for great new talent uh, that can do things like um, a program, uh, like um, cybersecurity related work, as well as CRM, ERP implementation, customization work for things like uh, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Zoho One mm -hmm. and other, other programs. What, what would you have available to be able to tap into so um, if I'm correcting, I, I'm not sure, are you looking for acad which kind of academia or the capabilities that we have? Uh, the capabilities uh, like, that, you, that you have and connections in with the schools that you might have in Costa Rica that is graduating those. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, we, we can do these connections with the, with the students. Actually, we did something similar last week, for example, with an animation a video game um, animation uh, studio from Canada that they were wanted to meet with the academia specific animation schools, just, just as you said, because they want to find the junior talent. So again, just um, drop me an email and, and you let me know exactly. There are some um, universities that are very, uh, have the specialty in the IT sector as, as well. And then we have the INA, which is the National Institute of Learning uh, which is like very, is before college, right? So they provide these technical degrees that I, it seems what you are looking for. Uh, so we can help with that connection. I've also well. reached out to you on LinkedIn. So hopefully you can okay. as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you.
LinkedIn is a social media channel of choice uh, <laughs> for professionals. Uh, Carol, over to you. Morning. Thank you, Michelle, for the excellent presentation. Um, we have been working with a group uh, in Costa Rica with the Global Learning Program, the um, the virtual uh, mentorship uh, program that you were um, talking about and the uh, internship, sorry. We are interested in further collaboration though, as far as different partnerships and, and looking at even recruitment opportunities or visiting students or exchange students. Um, we started with this shorter programs, but we're looking at, at um, interested in, in again, uh, more elaborate um, partnerships. Now, do you suggest we, I connect with you, Michelle, and see what the potential there is? Yes, for sure. And a bit in contact with your colleague as well from the um, since global learning uh, with Ada. It, yeah, with Ada. Yeah, Ada. Ada, Ada. Yes, Ada. Yes, yes, exactly. Thanks. So yeah, we've been uh, very active with with her for so for sure. If you have any specific like program or it's a it's a different uh, let's say um, um, faculty or of course we we can connect and to see what is what are specific needs that, that you have and we can. Um, you know, help with the connection with the universities. Excellent. Nice to meet you, Carol. You. Nice to meet you too, Michelle. Any other questions from the group? The PowerPoint presentation will be posted on our website uh, with a recording of this session at businessinsurrey.com. Just go under international and there's a, a Costa Rica button. And if you do have any further questions, you can connect directly with our international trade coordinator, Helena Glacken, and, uh, and of course, uh, myself. Everyone, thank you so much for attending this session. Uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., we have another digital session, this time with CBC Vancouver, focused on immigrant entrepreneurs, showcasing three amazing business leaders uh, in our community. Uh, please register for that and many other upcoming programs at businessinsurrey.com. Thank you for attending and make it a great business day. You may leave the meeting.